Hello everyone, welcome to this video where I'll be showing you how to use Flask CLI to add your own custom Flask CLI commands to your application. So without any further ado, let me show you how you can do this. So we're going to head to our terminal and we're going to type Flask. So when we type Flask, we get a list of commands that are available to run within our Flask application. So we have DB, Route, Run and Shell at the moment. The last three ones, so Routes, Run and Shell come when you install Flask. DB was added by a, a third party package which is called Flask Migrate. And we're gonna do exactly the same thing with our own application with a couple of commands that will help us down the line. So without any further ado, let me just go here and here I'm going to create a file called manage. So this is a Python file. This is the convention. And here I'm going to create a function and I'm going to call it create user. So I'm going to accept a couple of parameters. I'm going to accept the name. And also I'm going to accept the email. Okay, so I'm going to go here and I'm going to say user is equal to user, and this is my SQL alchemy model that I've created in an earlier video. So here we're gonna say name is equal to name and email is equal to our email. And then we're just gonna add our user to the session and then commit it. So I'm gonna say db.session.add and then I wanna add the user and then I wanna commit that session. Okay. So uh, this is the main things that we want to do. However, we need to decorate our function and also register it. So we need a couple of decorators here. So the first one I'm going to add is the CLI decorator. So I'm going to say CLI, and then we're going to import this from Flask CLI. So from Flask CLI, import CLI. So we're going to say CLI.command, because this is a command we're creating. And I'm going to call this create user because this is what I'm going to name it. You can name it whatever you want. And then we want to accept a couple of arguments. So we're going to say click. This comes whenever you install Flask. So we're going to import that and we're going to say click dot argument. And then we're going to say name. And I'm going to do the same for the email. Okay. And then we want to have the application context and there's another decorator for that which is called with app context and I'm going to import that again from the flask CLI and then another thing we want to do is add a doc block which is basically our description of our function so we're going to say um, pass the name and email to create a user and you're gonna see where this appears shortly. So we're gonna to go to our application here and we're gonna say app.cli.add command and then we wanna add the command that we created in manage. So we're gonna say manage.createUser. We don't wanna invoke this function, we just wanna pass it as a reference. So we're gonna to go to our terminal and then we're going to say flask and here we get our new command create user so it says pass the name and email to create a user so let's just try that so we're going to say flask create user and then i'm going to say i'm going to put this in quotes and the reason i'm going to put this in quotes is because our name is um, two words and we don't want that to be parsed as the second argument so we're going to say uh, I was just going to say example user and then here I'm going to say example at gmail.com but before I do that I'm going to go to my database so you can just see that this user does not exist and then we're going to run this okay so this was created which is great if we refresh this we can see example user got created okay I, I made a typo there but it doesn't matter However, we didn't get any, any anything to let us know that the user got created. So what we want to do here is we want to add some uh, 
essentially like print statements, but we, in our console, these are achieved with uh, the click um, library. So I'm going to say click dot echo. And here I'm just going to say creating user. And I'm going to copy this. And I'm going to put it at the end. I'm going to say user. And then, you know what? I'm just going to say the name of the user. So I'm going to say name created. And we need an F strip here. Okay. So if we try this again, of course, with another email because this is going to fail. And we run it. Great. So here we have creating user and user, example user created. So if we go here, we got this user created as well. Anyway, I'm going to delete these users for now. Okay. Great. So what we want to do here is we want to organize things a bit better. So the way we're going to do that is by using an app group. So essentially, if I go to my terminal and I say flask, we see create user, which is helpful, but we want to essentially group it under user. And the reason is because maybe there will be more commands related to users down the line. So we might want to group all of them together the same way all these commands were here, essentially DB and routes. So the way we can achieve that is we can go here and we can essentially instantiate app group. So I'm going to say user CLI is equal to app group. So this is a class we'll need to import from Flask CLI. And here is the name of the group. So I'm going to call this user. And we want to add the keyword argument here as help, because this will be the description of the uh, group. So I'm going to say um, user related commands. Okay. And here, what we want to do here is we want to replace the CLI here that we said CLI command, and we want to do user CLI command. And here I'm just going to say create because this is under user. So it makes sense that we're creating a user. And when we go to our application here, we do not want to register the function, but rather the CLI. So we're going to say user CLI. So if we go to the terminal and we say flask, we get user and it says user related commands. So if we say flask user, here we get the command, the single command that we have. So we can say flask user create, and then we need to pass the name. So I'm going to say example name and example at gmail.com. So if we run this, we go to a database, our user has been created successfully. Okay, excellent. So one last thing I want to show you is options. So there's another thing called options. And I'll explain exactly what those are. So we're going to say option. And here we're going to say dash dash extras. And then we're going to say default is equal to none because we don't want this to fail. And we're going to accept this as a third argument. So here we're going to say extras. Okay, so essentially, it's the name without the dashes. So here we're going to say extras. And I'm not going to do anything with it. I'm just going to print it. So I'm just going to say click dot echo. And I'm going to put an F string here. And I'm going to say the extras are. And here I'm just going to say extras. Okay. And this will be a string. So if we go to our terminal, and we run this, okay, we, we get an issue because that user already exists. I'm just going to delete that user. So if we run this, there you go, the extras are none. However, if we pass the extras, I'm going to say some extras. Okay, I'm going to delete the user again. 
could have commented out the code, but doesn't matter. There you go, creating the user, the extras are some extras. So essentially what happens here is if you pass a, an extras flag, um, the data comes here, otherwise it will default to none. So I hope you have enjoyed this video. And if you have, please like, comment, share the video as this helps the channel grow so I can keep making these videos. I upload new videos every week about Python and Flask. So if you want to get notified when I do, please subscribe as well as click the notification bell so you can be notified whenever a new video is released.